Welcome to St. Louis Marketing Voice, the pulse of CMOs and marketing executives in St. Louis. Planning for your retirement is something all of us should do. Wells Fargo is taking their financial planning message to a wider market by going high tech. In today's podcast, we talk with Wells Fargo's Chris Maloney about the latest financial marketing trends. So there are three, really. Um, one is, and it's been going on for a number of years, is the, the, the power of online marketing, in particular search marketing, changing businesses. You're able to reach people who are um, pretty close to making a buying decision and, and how you message them and how you target them. And we actually learn a lot about our industry from what people are searching for on Google and, and uh, on Bing. So we pay attention to what people are searching for. Um, the second big trend would be over the last five years, mobile um, advertising and just mobile marketing and the use of mobile apps. Now it's all shifted to iPad. I mean, I get calls every day um, from different parts of the company wanting us to get active into iPad products or iPad apps or iPad marketing. The third trend is social media, which is not necessarily new, but it's new to financial services. So um, Wells Fargo has for a long time used social media as a customer service response tool. You know, you complain that an ATM's down or you complain that the website's not doing something right. Um, you know, you do that on Twitter, you do that on a message board, Wells Fargo responds to it. We now have a lot more stuff around our brand pages, so promoting our content through YouTube and other brand pages, Facebook, etc. Um, but allowing our individual financial advisors to actually talk to people, you know, that would give me 15,500 active folks in the marketplace. We have very strict compliance rules around FAs talking, financial advisors talking to people. So I've got to solve that equation, which is really hard. Um, and that's the big thing we're focused on right now. How do you actually define uh, Wells Fargo's target market um, within the brokerage um, corporate services? So we look for, um, really there's three targets. There's um, a, the first group, which we would call um, mass market, where we're looking for emerging affluent people. So we're looking for people who are wanting to save money. We then have what I'd call kind of the, the 40s and 50 somethings who are really focused on planning for retirement. So pre-retirement planning. And then we deal with people who are right at or in retirement, um, helping them with their planning of how they spend money how they distribute their money. But our, our real focus at Wells Fargo Advisors is people who are um, you know, emerging affluent or currently affluent. Um, what do you see as some of, the, um, some of your best marketing efforts uh, since you've been with Wells Fargo over the last year? So we created a campaign to try to explain um, our unique process around how we do financial planning. Um, it's a very elaborate process we call Envision. And um, what we want to do is really put teasers out there about what this process is like. It's about setting goals for how you want to retire, when you want to retire, do you want to have a second home? And that process is fairly large and complex. So simplifying that, we've got a couple of ads. We've even got 15 second ads that we run explaining the Envision process in 15 seconds is really hard. But it's done really well. It's created some buzz around this Envision concept about planning for retirement. We've also revamped um, Wells Fargo's approach toward online advertising. We weren't, as a firm, really that focused on online advertising. There was a presumption that wealthy people didn't Google, and they do Google. They Google as much as regular folks like us. So we found people with a million dollars or five million dollars in their account actually do Google and do research online, just like everybody else does. So the fact that we were able to show that, that you, can, uh, you can get to affluent people online, um, surprise people. So that was, that was a pretty big innovation here. So we have 15,500 financial advisors who represent the on the street brand. You know, we want them to be at, at a level of service that's, you know, viewed like people view Nordstrom's or, you know, like you're walking into an Apple store. And so we want our financial advisors to be like those Apple reps who are great representatives of the brand um, face to face, you know, on the street. And so we want to leverage them. It's my job to build our brand uh, in the direction of like a Charles Schwab. And I've got to do that <clears throat> in innovative ways because um, we don't spend as much money as Schwab does. So I've got to figure out how to use things like social media, how to be very active in mobile, 
how to be active online, as well as all the typical media, TV, print, and otherwise, um, to be getting the brand out there. Because the brand is a new brand. This brand's not even two years old. It's a new brand. We have done a really good job of promoting um, very targeted, very specific content. I expect over the next year, um, I want to have some fun. I want to put some stuff out there that's funny. We're starting to do some TV ads that are kind of light and funny, do some online content that's light and funny, uh, but meaningful. I think we're bringing innovation to the stagecoach. That's what I put it. We're putting, we're putting an iPad and a, and a, and a four-square check-in on the stagecoach. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Um, the other thing that's cool is St. Louis was the gateway to the West. And the launch pad to all these people who, whether they took a stagecoach or a horse, went from St. Louis to anything West of us. It's a really cool icon to have the arch, the gateway to the West, and then this brand that was the, the, the way you got from anywhere East of here to the West was the stagecoach.